Presidents are exempt from the federal conflict of interest law, but President Trump enters office with an especially complex portfolio from his decades in business. Here's Anna Werner. Donald Trump is not only now the president, he's also effectively his own landlord at the Trump International Hotel on Pennsylvania Avenue, a building his company leases from the federal government. My theme today is five words under budget and ahead of schedule. That's what we did. It's a potential problem for President Trump, since the lease for the old post office building specifies that no elected officials in the U.S. government can hold the lease. And experts say Mr. Trump's conflicts of interest only begin there. He rejected advice from some government ethics lawyers to sell his companies or put them in a blind trust, neither of which he's required by law to do. The path he chose to give his eldest sons, Donald Jr. and Eric Trump, full control of the multi-billion dollar business. They're not going to discuss it with me. Again, I don't have to do this. He also said he would hire a new ethics advisor to review all domestic deals and said the company will not enter into any new foreign transactions. But CBS News has counted at least 10 countries, including Turkey and the United Arab Emirates, where Mr. Trump's company has business interests. He knew exactly what he needed to do and he was unwilling to do it. George Washington University law professor Steve Schooner points out the president could still make profits off his companies. Decisions that he makes as president will impact his bottom line. He will personally benefit or be hurt based on a number of decisions he makes as president. The president has said that any profits from foreign government hotel guests would go to the U.S. Treasury. But already his status as president appears to be mixing government and business. As Mr. Trump visited his own hotel for an unscheduled dinner on Wednesday and a luncheon here yesterday. Scott. Anna Werner in front of the Trump Hotel in Washington. Anna, thank you.